episode brought to you by thegiveawaygeek.com. Win board games, electronics, and gift cards at thegiveawaygeek.com. The Geek that keeps on giving. Hey everybody, welcome to Board Online, Board Offline. Today we're going to run through how to play the Tavarua Solo Career Mode. You've been practicing hard and honing your skills, and you've just cracked the top 50 servers in the world. You're now ready to compete in events throughout the year, keeping track of your rank in an effort to become the number one ranking surfer in the world. You begin your career at rank 50, and your goal, as you might suspect, is to reach rank one by the end of the year. You will record your rank after each event in the space provided on the surfer sheet here in the back of the rule book. For instance, after your first event, you'll record your rank under the January event column. Your career ends after the December event. If you achieve rank one at any point during your career, you win the game. Alternatively, if you fall below rank 60 at any point during your career, the career immediately ends. The game comes with one surfer sheet for you to keep track of your rank throughout your career. However, I've provided a link in the description below where you can find more surfer sheets to download and print out if you want to play more than once. On the events sheet found just below the surfer sheet, you will find all the events you will compete in for the year. This includes the month of the event, the name of the event, any special rules involved with the event, instructions on how to build the wave deck for that event, instructions on how many AI opponents you'll have and how they'll behave, and finally, scoring for the event. Throughout your career, you will compete in four different types of events. Longboard or shortboard contests are similar to normal contests, except there are fewer cards in the wave deck and only one board type is allowed. This means you and your AI opponents can score a maximum of two waves each. Combined contests allow both boards to be used and therefore a total of four scores can be recorded. And finally, photo shoots are special events where your score is determined by special challenges. Each event has anywhere from zero to three AI opponents. For instance, in March, there are no AI opponents for your photo shoot. But in January, you have one, February, you have two, and May, you have three. When an event states that it has one or more AI opponents, you will select one color for each. Then set out the matching balance token and score tokens. And finally, place the matching surfer and starting board on the shore. You will not keep track of the AI's balance. AIs will always successfully catch and ride waves regardless of which card they play. This includes barrels, which means they always earn barrel tokens if they're riding a wave when a barrel comes along. Also, AIs can earn perfect tokens for catching a perfect wave. However, they cannot earn stoke tokens or hang 10 tokens. Each AI opponent has either the letter L or S assigned to it. L stands for longboard, and as you might have guessed, S stands for shortboard. They each also have a number assigned to them, as you can see. This number represents how far out they will paddle before attempting to catch a wave. For instance, in January, your opponent has an L4 assigned to it. This means your January opponent will ride a longboard and paddle to spot four before catching a wave. AI opponents start on the shore just like you do. However, they do not have their own hand of cards. They will only draw cards when catching or riding a wave. AI opponents act in the following way. If an AI opponent is on shore, it will paddle directly to its target space. An AI opponent will always reach its target space, regardless of how far out it's trying to paddle and regardless of where it started. Once in their target space, the AI will check the brake for any upcoming perfect waves. Remember, a perfect wave is one where the number of the wave matches the number of the space. So for instance, here, if that was a four, the AI would wait for this wave to catch it. If a perfect wave is on the way, the AI will wait for it no matter how far away it is. 
So for instance, if this AI was assigned to space two and saw that this wave was a perfect wave heading his way, then despite the fact that there are several broken waves before it, the AI would still wait for this perfect wave to get to it. If there are no perfect waves on the way in the break, then the AI will instead catch the next available wave. So in this case, the next available wave will be this wave that will break on five and then be available in space four. If the next available wave is occupied, the AI will attempt to snake the wave. To snake a wave, the player attempting to catch the wave compares the printed value of their played card against the printed value of the card the rider of the wave played for their wave action. The highest number wins. So for instance, if the AI played a floater and you played a roundhouse, the AI would have successfully snaked this wave from you. In the case of an exact tie, the rider wins the contest. And remember, if the numbers are the same, but the colors are different, teal always beats maroon. If the rider wins the contest, the rider will stay on the wave and the other surfer will remain in the channel. If the rider loses, then the rider just got snaked. The rider places her surfer standing up in the wash. And discards the card she played for the ride action. She then scores her wave as if she had taken the bail action. The winner catches the wave as normal. Once an AI is riding a wave, it will continue riding until it reaches shore or gets snaked. So how exactly do AIs take the catch or ride action? When taking one of these actions, the top card of the player deck is drawn and placed face up in front of the AI's balance token. Here you can see the card the AI used to catch that wave and snake it from the other player. The stack that forms here will represent the AI's score pile for the wave. Keep in mind that an AI just like a regular player may not use any number four cards that have this no longboard symbol when riding or catching waves. If one of these cards is drawn, it should be immediately discarded and a new card drawn in its place. When an AI completes a wave, it will score in the exact same way regular players score. Count out the score from the cards and any tokens and place a score token on the score track. If an AI ends up in the wash as its next action, it will recover to shore. If an AI makes it to shore, and if the contest allows, the AI will change surfboards. The wave decks are constructed differently in career mode than they are in the regular game. Each event will instruct first how to build the deck and then how many of those cards to randomly remove. You will need to separate all the wave cards into their types in order to do this. For instance, in January, you'll shuffle together seven glass, five lull, five surge, four chop, and two barrel cards, taking the rest of the cards that you didn't shuffle into that deck and returning them to the box. Then with the deck you've just created, you'll shuffle that up and remove 10 cards at random, returning those cards to the box as well. The remaining cards are the cards you'll use for your wave deck for the January event. Also note that 10 cards is simply the number you remove in the January event because you're instructed to do so in the wave deck column. The number of cards removed from the deck will vary from event to event. Stoke cards may not be purchased in the solo career of Tavarua the way they are in the regular game. Instead, you can unlock Stoke cards by obtaining higher and higher ranking. For instance, here on the server sheet, you can see that you'll unlock one Stoke card at each of these ranks. Once you unlock a Stoke card, you'll place a check mark in the appropriate box. For instance, if I reached rank 45 and decided to unlock the card Call It, I'd place a check mark here in this box in the unlocked row under Call It. However, it is available for one use only. Once you use a Stoke card, you will place a check mark here next to Spent, and that Stoke card will no longer be available for you. You can see that each Stoke card can be unlocked a maximum 
of three times. However, with only nine total unlocks available to you, you'll have to choose your Stoke cards very carefully. And that's how you play the career mode in Tabarua. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments about the rules or anything else, please leave them in the description below. You can find me on Twitter, at Board Offline. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you like my channel, please subscribe. And until next time, if you're bored online, board offline.